Hey everybody, welcome to the reminder video for the Evil Wizard's Throne Room. This is just a reminder video, it's not a complete tutorial, so see the rule book for all of the rules. The large tile with the Wizard's Throne Room is actually divided into five rooms, all of them following the rules for a medium-sized room. This means, for example, that heroes must spend a movement point in order to move into an adjacent room. In addition, the rooms, in general, honor monster limits. There are two important points to know about this tile. Number one, this corner room up here is considered the throne room, and it does not obey monster limits when Malefias is adding monsters to this room. In addition, you may have noticed that I moved my hero into the treasure room. I didn't move them into the center room. On Board Game Geek, Patrick Matthias, a designer for the game, I'm sorry if that's not the way to pronounce his name, but he mentioned that um, it, the intention was for the heroes to go from the stair room either into the treasure room or the pit room, but not directly into the central room. That's a common mistake that many people make. The art is intended to show that this is a great big drop-off, and you can see these stairs coming into the central room from the side rooms. And if you've ever played it before, you'll see that this actually changes the gameplay quite a bit. And it makes a lot of sense as you think about coming into these side rooms. Why would you go into those side rooms if you weren't really forced to? Of course, the first thing that you do after moving your character into the room is to populate it with all the monsters and treasure. Notice that the Dark Watcher has a dotted diamond around it. This means that the Dark Watcher is not placed in the room to start with. Instead, if you ever get down to only one cultist left, immediately remove that cultist and place the Dark, dark Watcher in that room. And of course, Malephias is the boss that you will place in his throne room. Now, if you're playing true solo mode, you may feel very overwhelmed here in this throne room with all the monsters and the boss. However, Malephias and the cultists do not move. Only the other monsters move. However, that, if that still feels like a little too much for you, you can just play the level 1 and level 2 with a single hero, and then at the end, bring in a couple of helpers. You can then decide to give them abilities or not, depending upon how confident you feel. The room with the pit has one uh, ability that's not directly marked on the board. That pit is a bottomless pit. A hero in that room can def automatically defeat a minor monster by playing a step symbol. A hero can defeat a major monster by using two-step symbols. At the beginning of each turn, before the hero phase, Malephias attacks. That's not part of his normal boss abilities used in combat, but it's a result of him being in the throne room here. And once you enter level 3, it will happen every turn until the end of the game. Note that it doesn't happen the first time when the hero is placed here because the hero phase has already started. We will use two dice to resolve his attack. So it's a good idea to use a black die and a white die just to keep them separate. One die will be used to spawn monsters and the other die will be used to decide what area in the room his Grimbolt Lightning attacks. In this particular case, the die associated with the Grimbolt attack is the bow and arrow. That means that heroes in any room with the bow and arrow symbol will take one wound of unblockable damage. Also in this particular case, the die associated with the spawning monsters is a step symbol, so that means that we spawn a minor monster. That monster is placed in the throne room, this upper left corner. The throne room ignores monster limits. When a hero reaches the throne room and is ready to do battle with Malephias, we use his boss abilities. The boss abilities of Malephias are separate from his attack. They're used only in combat, it's just like any other monster or boss. When Malephias is on the blue side, at the beginning of combat he will summon a major monster and then shoot lightning bolts. As an example, when we begin combat, it may be that the young dragon was summoned and we rolled the bow and arrow dice to see where the lightning bolts strike. They would strike our hero here because this room is marked by a bow and arrow, and he would take one wound of unblockable damage. Then he would have to fight all the monsters and Malephias. 
Once Malathias is defeated the first time, you will flip him to the red side, and he will no longer do the blue side effect of summoning a major monster and shooting the Grimbolt Lightning. Instead, he will ignore one range damage. Note that Malathias will still continue to do his attack at the start of the t every turn, even if he's on the red side. You win the game if the heroes are able to defeat Malathias before the 21st turn. You lose the game if you're unable to defeat Malathias by the end of the 21st turn, or if e any hero has their health reduced to zero. That's the end of this particular video. Check out my other videos about Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia to learn more about how to play the Alliance game.